I took some time this week to study 30 Y Combinator companies that were within the 2020 to 2022 batches, and I ended up learning a ton, and I'm gonna share the three biggest patterns I found from successful companies during those batches. And here's how the story starts. Basically, I started my second startup, Pandem.dev, and I was actually looking for customers, and I figured a lot of those companies might be initial prospects, so I decided to go and do some research. Instead of sending a bunch of generic emails to the founders, I really wanted to understand how the company worked how they pretty much came to be, where they started and what their founders did. And in doing so, I thought I would get a good approach to tailor a nice email to them. But instead, what I got was a lot of actually amazing insights into how I should run my own startup. And if you know me, I'm already a huge fan of the Y Combinator philosophy. I've literally watched almost every single Y Combinator video from 2020. And I have a giant mind map where I keep all my notes of everything I've watched inside of there. But it was a different kind of experience seeing the actual theoretical knowledge that you always hear about from Y Combinator's partners be put into practice from these founders. And yeah, that brings me to the first pattern. A lot of these founders took the definition of founder product fit to the next level. Now, if you don't know what founder product fit is, it's very similar to the idea of product market fit, except it applies to the founders. Basically, founder product fit is when you are an expert on the problem you are trying to solve. A lot of the times this comes from solving your own problem, aka scratching your own itch. So you would have been or you are a customer of your own product. But a lot of other times it comes from being in a industry and finding niche pieces of knowledge that no one else really understands or has access to, and then finding and building a product around that. Almost every single one of these companies that I found, their founders weren't just people that might have been interested in a space or had some surface level knowledge, these guys were seriously experts in what they were doing. If their idea was something around hard tech like space travel or solar panels, they had really big backgrounds within that industry. One great example is this company I found called Arintra, and I looked at their website and I didn't really have any idea of what they were doing. And I found that that was sort of a key. A lot of the times when somebody has domain expertise, they were making a startup around a industry that you would not even have any idea that it existed. It's almost like if you weren't in the industry and you looked at their landing page as a regular person that wasn't one of their customers, it wouldn't even mean anything to you. It's just like some random page. You're like, okay, well, I guess it's a company, but it is positioned such that the actual customers and people that would use their site know exactly what they do because it's so niche down. A lot of the times the ideas I've come up with in the past are sort of surface level things that anyone could have come up with. But it was just so interesting to see that a huge pattern was that the ideas were so niche and specific that a regular person wouldn't be able to understand it. And that might be a hallmark of finding something that you really are an expert on. And chances are, even if you start with something that might be super niche to an industry, as long as that industry is big enough, it gives you a foothold into it to the point where you can even build a billion dollar business out of solving such a small problem just across a wide industry. And that brings me to the second pattern, which is how these companies generally scale and move forward. This one's a bit scattered. There were a lot of interesting data points. Now, of course, you're not gonna have one general way of scaling a company. Some companies had over 100 employees within three years of launching. Some of them had only 30 employees. And additionally, some companies raised a huge Series A, whereas some companies were already raising a Series B. But there were some interesting coincidences. Like for example, a lot of the B2B companies, depending on the space that they were in, would actually be signed to much higher tier enterprise companies, AKA a lot of higher tier enterprise companies where they're actual customers, whereas you wouldn't expect that out of a company that's only been running for maybe a couple of months or even a year. And this is all anecdotal, but it sort of suggests that the general idea might be to sort of get a proof of concept, get a minimum viable product and sort of product market fit just by starting off with smaller tier, less fancy and well-known customers and perfecting the product and your brand to the point where you have enough trust to go ahead and find bigger clients and close those big enterprise companies. Part of me also wonders if it's just the Y Combinator effect that once they are in California, they're close to all these big companies and founders, and they have the Y Combinator connections as well as backing and name behind them, it might be a lot easier to close these bigger clients. But I'll keep my eye on this one. I'm still a bit undecided on what this all actually means and whether or not it's just a coincidence. So when I do the part two of this video talking about 100 companies, once I go ahead and study all 100 companies, I'll give you an update on this. And that brings me to the third and probably the biggest pattern I saw, which I mean, I thought my background was pretty good. And when you watch Y Combinator's videos, they talk about like, yeah, we like people who are technical founders and they've gone to XYZ companies maybe and worked at like a big company in the past. And it's not that big of a deal if they haven't, but 
The third biggest pattern I saw was that some of these founders were just mind-bogglingly impressive. Like, I can't tell you how seriously intimidated I felt writing an email to some of these CEOs and CTOs of these companies. Just the sheer amount of Forbes 30 under 30 people that were on the founder list, and I know Forbes isn't like some great thing that you should go by, and a lot of the times like people have talked about the system being gamed and stuff like that, but I mean, it, there's just a disproportional amount of impressive people that are on this list. Like I talked about in the first pattern of having founder product fit, a lot of these people that were doing hard tech were ex NASA or ex SpaceX or ex some prestigious tech company in their past. And they've done so many amazing things before actually starting Y Combinator, it sort of made me realize something that I didn't before. And that's the idea that there are so many different ways to end up running a company. I spent the majority of my 20s pretty much trying to build things. I built stuff in esports. I built stuff in the creator industry. I've built stuff in almost anything you can think of. I have over a hundred GitHub repos of projects I've built in the past and things I've tried to launch in terms of startups and just SaaS companies. And I always thought that the way to become a successful founder is simply to just keep trying and trying my hand at founding things until I eventually succeed. But the most common thing I found amongst these founders is that they all worked somewhere, preferably somewhere prestigious within their industry. They got really good and were really important at that company. And then they eventually left and started something. And when they did, they had that unique advantage, number one, one of being in the industry for so long and sort of being under the wing of a prestigious company so they learned all the ins and outs, but because they witnessed the nitty gritty aspects of their specific niche, they were able to find those sort of small pockets and small gaps in the market, which in turn gave them that founder product fit as an advantage for when they did start their own company. And before I submitted my Y Combinator application last month, I went and I talked to a bunch of previous applicants and successful YC founders that I found online. LinkedIn. And pretty much I found that YC looks for two things in a company. Number one, they look to see whether or not you are a company that already has a product, customers, user, and you have traction, and then they'll sort of grill you based on that traction. And when they do, they're essentially looking to see if you could become a billion dollar company, or if you are pre-product and you just have an idea, for example, and no customers, no traction, then what they're going to look at is to see if you have that founder product fit and that impressive background that shows that you have more insight than almost anyone else would when starting a company like this. And at first I thought it would be like, yeah, well, I'm an engineer. So if I start a product that sort of helps other engineers, I I technically have founder product fit. But seeing some of the amazing founders on this list, it honestly just intimidated me like crazy. I was in awe at how accomplished a lot of these people are and how much they have gotten done up to the point where they started their company. Now, again, this is probably going to be selection bias. I was looking at a bunch of companies that I filtered for like 50 to 100 employees. They were from a couple years ago, so they've had time to grow their business. And I'm sure there are a ton of other founders that have been successful that number one, didn't get into YC. Number two, didn't show up on that list because I filtered in a specific way that didn't include them. And I'm not saying that you have to be someone like this to start a successful company. I just found it interesting and I'd be willing to bet that there's probably a correlation there. But yeah, those are my three big takeaways and I'm going to just keep on researching more and more companies as I reach out to them over the next couple of weeks. And I'm gonna probably be making more follow-ups to this video, like things I learned from studying 100 YC companies. And I'll probably include more patterns and reiterate on these ones and see if they were true or not. So if you are interested in following along that journey, make sure you like and subscribe, leave a comment, it helps a lot with the algorithm and make sure you join our tech founder Discord, where if you have an idea, you want to learn more about funding and stuff like that, we literally have people from venture capital firms in this Discord just looking at people pitch their ideas. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you join, and I'll see you guys in the next video.